Welcome UC Bearcats to UC Bearcats on the Prowl, part of the Grueling Truth Radio Network. As always, James Ernest and Mark Fightmaster. Mark, what have the Bearcats been up to? Well, James, uh, they they keep winning, you know, and that's a good thing. Uh, what we it's been a couple weeks since our last show. I think they've played. I think they beat South Florida, they beat Central Florida, and they beat ECU uh, since then. So it, it's been a good run. Uh, the defense is showing what they can do. I like how they did it uh, two different ways kind of there. You mentioned the defense. Obviously, uh, you know, in all three of the games, they've been you know, holding the uh, holding the other team down, you know, 55, 38, 60. But the fact that mm-hmm. they were still able, able to overcome such a low score of themselves in the, uh, the UCF game, I mean, yeah. dang, only 49 points, but still it all worked out in the end and, you know, they were able to uh, – get that win and uh, keep building, you know, their record in the AAC because it's looking Uh like there's a good chance they might end up going undefeated in the AAC other than maybe Wichita State. That's going to be the big challenge at the end of the year. Looking forward Uh to that on the the, uh, 18th of February and, uh, of course, the last game of the year, which that will be at Wichita State on March 4th. Uh Yeah, Yeah, and Mm -hmm. well, I was getting ready to say the, the interesting thing is uh, Wichita State slipped a little bit lately. You know, they, they've lost two, two, three games here. So it's given UC a little bit of breathing room, uh, which is a nice thing to have in this conference. Because, you know, I, we, we saw it when they played South Florida or Central Florida. You're going to have nights where the other team's defense is good. Your defense has to be better. And it's nice knowing that, yeah, they may be able to slip up on the scoring end a little bit, but their defense is just solid. And so it, it keeps them in games. Uh, like that Central Florida game, you know, they they probably didn't deserve to win that game the way they shot, the way their offense was. But, man, that defense was locked down. You know, oh, and, and then the next game they go and, and play, uh, who was it, ECU, who isn't nearly as talented as Central Florida. But then uh, – the and ECU scored 38, 40 points in the first half, and then they scored 20 in the second half. So it's good having a lockdown defense. Exactly, because that's one of those things that you can count on night in and night out. I mean, I know UC emphasizes it like crazy with Nick Cronin. Obviously, Northern, they're the same way, really focusing on their defense. Mm -hmm. Um, Even Xavier in the area is, I mean, that's one of those things that all three coaches truly do uh, have in common and believe that because, like you said, I mean, you know, with that uh, Central Florida game, you can have a bad offensive night. But mm-hmm. if you don't have a bad defensive night, you're going to win game. Right. Shooting comes and goes. Uh, it, it's so solid defense stays. And, and being able to be that strong on the defensive side of the ball is a really good thing right now for, for this team. I'm excited about tomorrow night. Um, just mm-hmm. tri-state area basketball is going to be huge. You got the uh, the Xavier game at 6:30, mm-hmm. and then at nine o'clock you have uh, UC playing against Temple, and of course Temple always uh, plays UC uh, tough. Right, we uh, we saw that the last game. Uh, UC had to come from behind to win 55-53. Now, granted, it was a Temple, and I, I remember that night very vividly because I was texting with my brother. I'm like, "Well, they're losing this game." Uh, you could just kind of I got that feeling early in the game, and then. It was nice that they were able to come back. They were helped by a stupid technical by the Temple's coach. Mm-hmm. But you take those openings. So tomorrow night will be a good game just to see uh, how far they've come because I think this is the first – yeah, it's the first uh, repeat opponent in the AAC. Mm-hmm. So I'd, I'd like to be able to compare the, the two uh, performances. So it'll be, uh, it'll be a good game to see. But you were talking about uh, – Xavier, you know, and as much as it kills me to talk about Xavier and talk good about him, we were talking before the show, you got the number eight and number nine team in the country, three miles apart. And that's the first time it's ever happened. Two teams in the top 10, uh, that, that close together. And then shoot, if you want to expand it a little bit, go up to Columbus, you got the number 13 team in the country. We get some really good basketball going on around here. Exactly. I mean, and Dayton doesn't do a bad job. Right. Mm-hmm. States. Pretty tough this year. MKU. So there's a lot of good basketball. You're right. I mean, it's very competitive. 
My big thing is, like you were saying about the, uh, the repeat opponent, I'm wanting to see more depth in the scoring because in the, mm-hmm. the first game they had like four players, three of them scored in double digits. The fourth one was close enough. Justin Jennifer will give him credit with nine. You know, but yeah. the rest of the team really didn't score. I mean, he had two other guys that scored a basket. That was it. That was the diversity of scoring. And I want to see more depth in the, uh, in the offense tomorrow night. Yeah, I, I think we need to expect uh, something, some points out of Jaron Cumberland. He didn't score last time they played Temple. And he needs to – I don't think that's going to happen tomorrow night. Exactly. Yeah, but will Justin Jennifer go out and get his nine? Yeah, because yeah, I mean, yeah. he had a great game against – was it South Florida? I want to say it was South Florida. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had 18 against South Florida. So, I mean, he can score. We all know that. It's just, mm-hmm. uh, you know, seeing him do it on a consistent basis. I mean, right now he's a sophomore, and if he can, you know, do this night in and night out, say as a junior or senior, he's going to make the NBA. I mean, that's not a question. It's just, you know, how high of a draft pick can he make himself? And the more consistent you are, the better the draft pick's going to be. Right, right. And then uh, the other thing about tomorrow night's game, uh, we will have Kane Broom. He didn't play the last time. I, I think he was nursing a sprained ankle still so hopefully we're going to get a uh, big contribution out of those two uh to, to exactly. make this maybe not as close a game oh yeah this should be this should be a lot a uh, lot more one-sided and, and done earlier at least that's what i'm hoping mm-hmm. yeah honest. i agree with you after the second game you know after one game this will be the second game i'm hoping around halftime as much as you know i'd like to stick around and ask nick some correct questions I'd rather go home and go to bed. I hear you. I hear you, man. We're getting old. Exactly. Stick around, take some nice pictures in the first half, that kind of thing for the game and all, and for you know future usage. But yeah, and the, you know, with uh, working early in the mornings and all now with IGS uh, selling electricity, it's yeah. I think I, uh, I think I want my sleep a little bit more. <laughs> I hear you, brother. I hear you. And then, you know, how we were talking about Wichita State and we were talking about yeah. how uh, Xavier and UC and so close and all that. And, um, when they do play Wichita State, which is going to be on the 18th of uh, February, the night before mm-hmm. or the day before, Xavier plays the number one team in the country, Villanova. So, I mean, once again, oh. we're talking about some great basketball. I mean, mm-hmm. you can go Saturday to the Xavier game. I know, you know, all our fans are going, boo, we don't like Xavier, but to see the number one team in the country, that, you know, would be worth it right there. And then the next yeah. night, going to see UC play Wichita State. So, I mean, there's some really good stuff going on. UC still got UConn coming up. I mean, they, uh-huh. uh, they got some new games. SMU, where they're going to play at. Because I'm trying to think of who it was. SMU uh, did really well against the other night. Uh, Wichita State. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, because I remember seeing, yeah, that score, and I'm like, wow, maybe this and you, and I, you know, they did pretty good the first game, but they really had impressed me with that Wichita State game. Yeah, and and that's one thing looking ahead at UC schedule that we got to be a little concerned about because Wichita State just had the SMU Houston uh, games and consecutive games. It wasn't back to back nights, obviously, but consecutive games. One was at home, one was away. They lost them both. UC has that coming up. Oh, gosh, when? They've got it coming up in... February. February the Yeah, 11th. February. And it's back-to-back games, and the thing is, they're both away. Exactly. So, oh, yeah. You know, with, that, with them being in Texas, they're going to hit both those games in a row. Same with a lot mm-hmm. of times, they're going to have the two Florida games back-to-back. I mean, it's just, exactly. Yeah. Same so, the, hopefully, they can get through that. that. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah, that's going to be a tough little uh, gauntlet there. Oh, yeah. Uh, you got those two road games in a row, and then you got the Wichita State game at home. So, yeah, that's mm-hmm. yeah, it's going to be a, a rough stretch. But that's a nice thing. I mean, the UC team this year is just so darn good. and Most of the games have really been so deep. And I'm mm-hmm. optimistic. Yeah, as a matter of fact, look at their schedule. February is going to be a hell of a month. It's going to okay. be tough. Um, they open at UConn, then they got Central Florida back home. That you know, Taco Fall had to have season-ending surgery. And to me, he is a big key, obviously, in Central Florida's defense. I mean, shoot the kids 7'6 or whatever. So 
that's going to open up the middle a little bit. Maybe it's not going to be as much of a defensive struggle for UC that game. But then after Central Florida, they got to go to two SMU, two Houston. Then they play Wichita State. Then they got UConn. I mean, that's – and then they finish the month up with Tulsa. That's a tough month. That is a tough month. Yeah. So oh, that's, yeah. And, and the games are pretty – I think the biggest break between games is five days between Central Florida and SMU. Exactly. So there's a lot of a lot of back to back to back kind of you know constantly yeah. going yeah so that'll be that'll be an interesting one. But that's also where something we've talked about with this team plays in, and that's depth. You know, uh, if if they can get good minutes from the backups, uh, Trey Scott and those guys, mm-hmm. uh, it, it could be. I mean, you know, it, it could be a good month. They could they could uh, play well through it all, get through. I think if they can get through that month with maybe one loss, uh, they they set themselves up really well. Um, exactly. Interestingly, I was going to say interestingly enough, I saw a tweet yesterday from Andy Katz, uh, the basketball analyst, and he put out uh, like his top twenty five teams, and that could make the final four, and UC was the fourth on his list. Uh, it was they were behind uh, Purdue and oh I forget who the other two were, but in in his thing was this is a team that plays great defense and gets and gets scoring from a lot of people, and while the names aren't household names, they're still good. Yeah, everybody's getting on Purdue's bandwagon of late. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean they're, they they become a popular pick. I, I was yeah. a fan of theirs about two years ago. They had a seven-footer. Oh, gosh, I went down to watch uh, UK practice down in Lexington for the first round mm-hmm. of the tournament. And just looking at the guy, I'm like, he was a freshman. I want to say he was a freshman. But they, they were like, he's going to be somebody. You could yeah. Uh, I know which kid you're talking about, too, and I can't yeah, remember Yeah, bad name. with names. But, yeah, yeah he, we were watching them because they practiced before. Uh, I think it was, yeah, it was UC. It was UK practice, then UC, or no, UC, then UK, and then it was Purdue at the, uh, was the last one to practice, and we ended up sticking yeah. around and watching some of that, and we're like, yeah, he's, they've actually got some pretty good talent there. Wasn't it, yeah. gosh, wasn't it the European name? Wasn't it? Yeah, I want to say it was yeah. something yeah, European. But yeah, yeah, like you were saying about the depth and all, I mean, I know he's just a freshman, so it's kind of understandable that he's kind of come and gone a little bit during the season, but, uh, Keith Williams, I want to see something yep. more from him in February because mm-hmm. in a couple of the games I've been really impressed. Like he was in uh, the red and black game, and he did a great mm-hmm. job in the second half of that game. Yeah, he's he's a heck of a player, and he's been getting more minutes lately. Mm-hmm. And, and that's good to see because we're, we're going to need more time from him as we get into the grind of February and then March and then the tournament because it, it just gets exhausting. And, and granted, these these kids are basketball players and they're in shape and all that fun stuff, but it, it still gets tiring. They get beat on every day in practice. They get beat on in, in games. So I think uh, he will be a major factor as we go down the stretch. Getting good minutes from him. I mean, he doesn't score a lot, you know. But any points that we can get from him is bonus. Exactly. Yeah, I think. He's got the ability to score, but you're right. He hasn't exactly. had to because of, there's been so many other players on the team. Because he's he's going to be a really good player once again in the next year or two. He's going to start, mm-hmm. you know, really doing some big things. Yeah, what I'd like to see when he's in, I'd like to see him start hitting more threes. He's taken 18 on the season and only made two. Uh, that's you know kind of a, a black hole there when he's taking three pointers. <laughs> So, I'd like to see him get some more threes. Exactly. So, yeah, I'm sure that's one of the things they're going to focus with him in the off season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of like they did with Justin Jennifer. Uh, you know, uh, going into last season, I believe. I think uh, I remember when Terry Nelson was on. And they exactly. said they worked a lot on his three-point shooting. I think you're going to need to do the same thing with Williams because that kid has all the physical tools to be an absolute weapon for this team. Uh, it, granted, he's not he doesn't have Jaron Cumberland size, but he's still a big athletic kid. So, 
day run. Cumberland is just, I mean, he's such a beast. I mean, mm-hmm. with his with his strength, but yeah, and, it, and that's one of those things. He, they're letting him do more inside stuff this year, but he's still more just kind of floating in the lane and still shooting the threes, where he's not really muscling in there yet. Which you know, that's one of those things I want to see from him next year. That I think, mm-hmm. I mean, I know he's a guard and all that, but I mean, with like you said, with his size and power, he could be doing more. Well, and basketball is an attacking game now. It's changed with the bigger, more physical guards. It's an attacking game, and we need that out of those players. Uh, Kane Broom does a good job getting to the hoop. Uh, Justin Jennifer, when he's in, does a good job getting to the hoop. Because then, if they're attacking and making layups, and the next time they attack, somebody comes off them, they dump it to Gary Clark or uh, or uh, Kyle Washington. So it, it, it's got to – that game has to evolve. It, it has to come around. So exactly. we'll see. Mix a good coach. He'll get them doing it. Oh, definitely. So the uh, what's your final thoughts or takeaway from uh, this upcoming weekend basketball? Well, uh, you know, I think UC's got a, a, a you know a winnable schedule ahead of them, as we were talking about. You know, they've got uh, Temple tomorrow, and let me get their schedule up here. They, they got Temple tomorrow, and then they've got Memphis at Memphis on the 27th, which is Saturday, and then and then they go to Houston. I, they should win those three games. Uh, Houston, actually, Houston comes here. So yeah. those, those three games are winnable. Uh, it's a Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday stretch. So they get – or it's a Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday stretch. Sorry. I, I keep – I lost track of the days. But th- that's a good spacing between the games. They should be able to get through this with a 3 and record. And then I uh, get ready to travel to UConn on the 3rd of February and start that with a month. But uh, I, I would think they'd come through this week pretty good. I agree with you. Should be a solid week of uh, basketball for UC. Fans should definitely uh, make it out to uh, both those Wednesday games if possible. I mean, they've been getting great attendance, so I think they uh, probably will you know, keep it up uh, attendance-wise and play-wise on the court. And, uh, you know, I know the uh, the game tomorrow night's a little bit on the late side, but it's yeah. definitely worth checking out. Exactly. You know, they've uh, th- this is a fun time. You know, uh, like we were saying beforehand, I mentioned earlier, we got a lot of good basketball going on here in Cincinnati. And uh, you put your rivalries aside and enjoy what's going on with Xavier and UC. And like I said, even Ohio State up the road, I mean, they're undefeated in Big Ten. Uh, enjoy, enjoy what's going on with them. It'll be fun. Sounds like a plan. So for uh, James Ernest and Mark Pipemaster, signing off for UC Bearcats on the Prowl.